Uh, thank you all for coming out this evening. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your day. We appreciate you coming. Um, I want to bring everybody up to date, up to speed, because I know some are here for the first time, and so you don't know what we're doing or why we're here, what we're uh, trying to accomplish. And the number one thing that I want you to, for a takeaway is that we are 100% Republican and we are 100% conservative. So that's what we're here for, is to bring our Republican Party back to conservatives, yeah. not the rhinos. That's the key to what we're doing. We're encouraging everyone in the upcoming election to vote 100% Republican. Down the ticket, vote Republican. If you don't know who they are, vote Republican, because I can guarantee you the alternative is not very good. And if you don't vote at all, it's even worse, because someone else will then come in and take your place. So please vote Republican on everything that you have. You can even go to the uh, votedenton.org and you can get a sample ballot that I have here somewhere in my, you can print your ballot information. I already have it filled out. So if you want to see it, you can see it. Be careful and print it on 11, eight and a half by 11 because it won't have everybody on it. Well, I, okay. Well, I'm not going to take this to the poll anyway, but the point is Republicans are everywhere. There are three things that you need to be concerned with with Denton. Denton County wants to get another $650 million bond from you. If you trust them, vote that way. If you don't trust them, vote that way. Um, the city of Denton has a proposition where uh, Allison McGuire is to be removed on a recall vote. Now, you don't know who she is. She's sort of a liberal. Uh, she goes very left on a lot of issues, and so that's up to you whether you think she's a good witch or a bad witch. I don't know, um, <laughs> but take care of that. And then the other is to approve to eliminate low-level marijuana enforcement. If you don't think marijuana is any longer the uh, gateway drug and you like to do things like that, then vote whatever your conscience says you, or if you've just kind of tired of this, you know, the uh, slow crawl that we're in, that everything becomes legal, like other things we'll talk about, then vote that way. So vote Republican, vote conservative, and vote more than anything else. Now, as far as our club is concerned, what does it take to be a member of our club? It's a very grueling thing. First of all, only the, not the young shall survive. That's not good out here, is it? Um, <laughs> there's only three things you need to be. Number one, a resident of Ropes, Ropes and Rents, and that means an HOA dues paying resident. Uh, you have to agree with our Republican priorities, which we'll talk more about in a little bit, and be a registered voter in Denton County. Basically, fog the mirror, you're a member. The thing is, we are not going to collect membership dues. We don't see a point in that. We don't see a purpose. That's just one more person to spend a lot of time keeping up with it. We don't want to be like certain clubs that say, oh, we have 700 members, but you look at their financial data and they only have 345 dues paying members. Well, what is it? Over 700 or 345? We don't want to jack with it. So we're not going to have any dues. That doesn't mean we're not going to ask for money from time to time. In fact, when you walked in, you may have seen a bucket out there that said, one dollar, no Democrat chairs. That means you put a dollar in the bucket there, we're going to get postcards printed and mailed to Dale Phelan in Orange County, or in Orange, Texas, to tell him we don't want any more Democrat chairs in our stuff. So we'll ask money about things like that from time to time, but no membership dues. Now, if you're not a member, can you still come? Heck yeah. You can be what we call an attendee, which means maybe you live here, maybe you vote, you can vote here. Oh, but that number eight priority, just sort of you don't know what to do with that. Come on ahead, come on in, you can listen. 
hopefully, eventually will wear you down and you'll say, okay, I agree with you. Then you can kumbaya with us. If, on the other hand, you don't live out here or you're not registered for the county, you can still come as a guest, whether somebody invites you who is a member or who is a regular attendee, or you just decide to come as a guest, we'll say you're a guest of us, of our club. And so you can come and listen. Maybe you're from another conservative club, but do you wanna know what it is we're doing right or what we're doing wrong, what we don't wanna do, how we wanna do it? Come on down, we're here for you. So that's all it takes to be a member, a resident, whatever else I said, resident, <laughs> the priorities and Registered voters, there you go. All right, see, it's so difficult. So, does anyone know what is significant about the year 2022 in the world of politics in Texas? Any clue? Getting ready for 24. Getting ready for 24. This is the 20th anniversary of the Republicans holding the governor's house the Senate, and the House of Representatives. For 20 years, we have had total control of our state government. And yet here we are, still talking about lowering property taxes, having better schools, school choice, all these other things that we think have just come up in the last year or two. 20 years we've been talking about it. We can have drag queens show up in high schools, but we can't have Christmas and Easter. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Teachers can, can teach critical race theory, but they can't teach divine creation. Why? There are some people who say that an 18-year-old doesn't have the brain capacity, the, the, their mind has not been fully developed to own a gun, but yet, a girl younger than that, through a process known as judicial bypass, can get an abortion without parental guidance or permission. We are totally screwed up. And why? How can it be this way? And so here's what we're saying is, we want to fire all of the rhinos that are in office today and that will be in office. and no doubt will be in office in November. This is their last year where they get a free pass. No more free passes. We are here to give you the resources available where you know how these yahoos vote. I know this is gonna be different, difficult for some of y'all to grasp. They don't always tell you the truth. Sometimes, sometimes their corporate donors or their lobbyists have louder voices than you do. That shouldn't happen. We are the ones that hired them. We are the ones that should fire them. Amen. And so that's what we're here to do is to say, revote for every Republican. Next year, we're gonna start watching what you do. And we're gonna start holding your feet to the fire so that next time around, you may or may not go back to the happy house that you know about. So how do you do that? Number one, distance yourself from Dale Phelan and all of his money and all of his constituency. Put a dollar in the bucket and we'll let him know we don't appreciate the shooligans that he's been doing. When you ask them how, to, how they voted, demand that they tell us the truth. We'll find out eventually, so just tell us the truth anyway. Stop taking money from lobbyists and corporate sponsors. Because isn't it odd that here our tax rates are going up in Denton County, but yet a few years ago, uh, Peterbilt and Bucky's and a few other corporations got millions of dollars worth of tax rebates meaning we're paying their school taxes so they don't have to. That's not right. Something is wrong with that picture. Finally, stop compromising with Democrats. 
and your liberal friends in Austin. We didn't send you there to be mamby-pamby. We sent you there to get things done. And if that means you can't go out and have drinks with the boys, then don't go. You can't go to the parties or go on the trips they go on. Don't go. It's that simple. And so that's what we're all about. We're all about regaining our government so that it is a conservative gov government, not liberal, not moderate, not green, not whatever else. And so that's what we're here for. And so that's why I hope you're here, is that you understand that and you recognize it and you want to be part of the fight with us. So at this point, I know I could have gone over there, but I'm going to do this instead. GOP County and Precinct Chairs. If y'all are here, anybody? Okay, very good. Oh, we got it. Oh, what? Come on down. Any elected officials, stand where you are and shout out who you are. Very good. Here are some upcoming events that you uh, need to be aware of in October 25th uh, through Texas Project at the Denton uh, Patriot Sandwich Company. Uh, early voting starts on the 4th. How are you going to vote? There you go. It goes uh, election day is November 8th. How are you going to vote? There you go. Our next meeting is Matt Rinaldi, who is the uh, chairman of the uh, Texas Republican Party. So he'll be here a month from today. So, without further ado, Jill Glover, come on down. Let me get my little thing here. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not real. Technological, so let me let me make sure. Are you so Mike's you're gonna? Mike, Mike's not working. Is it working now? Am I gonna have to sing "Strangers in the Night"? Nope. <laughs> you know, there we go. Thank you. Is that better? Yes. Hi, y'all. <laughs> I am so glad to be here with you, um, and it is absolutely my pleasure to warm up Pastor Rafael Cruz, and so I'm so excited to hear them just a little bit. But I really appreciate, um, Stephen, you asking me to come and talk about legislative priorities. I am the um, uh, chair of the Legislative Priorities Committee for the Republican Party of Texas, and I am your SREC for Senate District 12. And if you're not real familiar what an SREC is, that stands for State Republican Executive Committee Woman. And I have a committee man, Dave Wiley, who I don't see here tonight, but he's often around. Um, but we, uh, there are 62 of us, there's a committee man and a committee woman for each Senate district in the state of Texas. 
And so the 62 member board of the SREC is like the board of directors. So we, we manage the party, we oversee the finances, we oversee policy, uh, plan for state convention, all those kinds of great things, and it is my pleasure to serve you. So we are elected every two years at state convention. How many of you have been to state convention? Awesome, and I hope uh, next time around, this uh, after our next convention will be uh, 2024, and it will be a fantastic state convention, and I hope that everybody will go. So um, please, please think about that in advance. So I have entitled my, my short little presentation tonight, The Fight for Liberty and Righteousness, because I will just be honest with you. I believe that that is what our fight is, not only here in Denton County, but also in the state of Texas and in our nation, right? And so all of the legislative priorities that we're going to talk about tonight, I think, have to do with both of those things, with righteousness and with liberty. So if you don't mind advancing for us, um, I would like to remind us of a couple of uh, thoughts from our founders first. You may remember the story after the signing of the Constitution, Benjamin Franklin was asked by a woman on the street, Sir, what kind of government have you given us? And his reply was what? A republic man, if you can keep it. And are we not really in a fight now to keep our republic? The Democrat Party wants to have you believe that we live in a democracy, and we do not, right? That would be all of the wolves deciding what to have for dinner with sheep, sort of, that sort of kind of. Um, then the other quote from John Adams, human passions unbridled by morality and religion would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And I think that you would agree with me that right now in our country, our faith is being challenged like never before. And I think it is obvious that the other side wants to stomp out, in particular, Christianity, yeah. right? And we are seeing that, and that, that is our struggle. So this is Reverend Fun. This is um, <laughs> referring to the story in Mark 5, 1 through 19, uh, where Jesus cast the demons into the swine. You go over the cliff, and the sheep say, I think it's pretty obvious that God prefers sheep. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I'm just going to be real honest with you. I think we are in a spiritual battle. I think that we are seeing demons, uh, certainly demonic activity, and um, that, that, is, that is our real struggle and our real fight. And I think we first win the battle on our knees in prayer, um, and then we have to stand and we have to engage as good citizens, and that is why you guys are here tonight, I know. All right, speaking of demons, um, the next couple of slides, I'm sorry, I should have warned you, Stephen, you, <laughs> I should have, should have given you a disclaimer. Okay, I'm about to show you a really bad slide. Okay, now. <laughs> um, here's my, here's my, my evidence for my statements earlier. In the Biden administration, we now have an assistant director of health and human service who is um, a mentally ill man who thinks he is a woman, and his name is Dr. His name is Richard Levine. He goes now by Rachel. But the scary thing is, is that he is in the Health and Human Services Department. Yeah, right? That is the scary thing. Then we have a deputy assistant in the Department of Energy who self-describes himself as non-binary, drag queen, refers to himself as they or them, and again, I would refer to the demons, um, and his name is Sam Britton. And so no wonder we are seeing the level of depravity that we are seeing now in our public schools, in our public square, with drag queen, brunch, story hour, whatever, festivals. This is, del this is a deliberate agenda to confuse and destroy the thinking and identities of our children and grandchildren. And I would say that it's demonic and it must stop. Amen. Next slide. Do I have to? All right, yes, you have to. All right, this one's worse. Well, I don't know, they're all bad. This is Dr. Dimitri. He is the White House 
National Monkeypox Monkey Response Deputy Coordinator. He is a self-described Satanist, and you see the pentagram on his chest up there on his right chest. And um, I'm, I'm really not even going to tell you about the mask that the gentleman next to him is wearing, but you may have seen it in the previous slide. And let's just say it, um, well, I will tell you. He, he refers to himself as something called a pup handler, a pup handler. And it is depraved and immoral. And again, th these are things that our children are being taught is on the quote normal spectrum and i don't know about you but some of this stuff i have to look at because i don't even know what they're talking about but it is horrific and so now let's talk about texas so what do we have in our texas state house 2019 we have five ladies who founded the lgbt caucus one of the ladies, Democrat Representative Mary Gonzalez, self-identifies as a pansexual, meaning attracted to many gender identities. Now, there is a reason I am sharing these things with you, and it has to do with our legislative party, so I'm going to tie it all together in just a minute. But let's go to the next slide. How many members now of the LGBT caucus do we have in Austin? Now we've got, in addition to the five founding members, we have 31 Democrat members who are either self-identifying LGBT or they are allies. So that makes 36 Democrats in our Texas House who are perfectly fine with the things that I showed you that are going on in the White House, in the Biden administration, right? They're perfectly fine with it. And in fact, some of these members are, go back, you're going too fast. <laughs> Some of these members are folks who try to, um, we, I testified a couple of sessions ago on a bill that would have protected our counselors from any future push to try to shut down their freedom of speech in counseling folks with unwanted same-sex attraction or who did not, who have gender identity disorder. You, it, they now call it gender dysphoria, but the old name is gender identity disorder, which I think is a better name, right? We're getting, we're starting to get politically correct with some of our psycho, um, psychological diagnoses. But these, these folks are ones who are diametrically opposed to banning gender modification, right? They want to say, oh no, little kids, can absolutely transition from one sex to the other, and they cannot. And so these are folks in our Texas house that we, we fight against. All right, next slide. All right, here is why I am a Texas Republican. I don't know if you've ever read the preamble to our state party platform, but if you haven't, you can take a picture of it. You can also go to our texasgop.org website and read the whole platform, but I wanna read it real quick. Affirming our belief in God, we still hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. Throughout the world, people dare to dream of freedom and opportunity. The Republican Party of Texas unequivocally defends that dream. We strive to preserve the freedom given to us by God, implemented by our founding fathers, and embodied in the Constitution. We recognize that human nature is immutable. And this statement was just added in at our last state convention because we wanted to be very clear that unlike the Democrats, we do not believe that men can become women and vice versa. That God created man in his image with a design in mind. We further recognize the traditional family is the strength of our nation. It's our solemn duty to protect innocent life and develop responsible citizens. We understand our economic success depends upon free market principles. If we fail to maintain our sovereignty, we risk losing the freedom to live these ideals. Is that not a wonderful, wonderful freedom? Absolutely. Next slide. All right, so at our state convention, our delegates voted on eight legislative priorities. Protect our elections, number one. Same priority that we voted on at the previous state convention. We still have work to do. We have got to go in and restore the felony penalties for election fraud that 
our, our guys messed up last time and let, let something go through that they shouldn't have because they allowed those penalties to be diminished to misdemeanors. We gotta correct that. And then the other thing our delegates told us they wanted is closed primaries which would stop Democrats from voting in Republican primaries, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Number two, secure the border and protect Texans. This one is obvious. We know we need to secure our border. Number three, ban gender modification of children. It really should say ban sex mutilation of children, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is this, number three. Uh, it was a uh, prior state convention. We have the same, exact same priority. And I, I really do have hope that we're gonna get this one passed this time around. More of our legislators are on board and are saying they wanna file bills. So we really need to continue encouraging that way. Ban Democrat chairs. All right, <laughs> let me ask you this. I showed you 36 Democrats. If any one of those were to chair a, com a committee, would they want to pass any of our bills protecting children? No. no. If that's not the strongest argument for no Democrat chairs, I don't know what is, right? And I will tell you that there were quite a few um, senior Democrats on that list, and um, they, don't need to be, they don't need to be chairs. Number six, abolish abortion in Texas. We still have some more work to do. We have some defense to play because the Dems are coming at us wanting to dilute our laws. Number seven, defend our gun rights. Same with that. We, we're going to be doing a lot of defense this uh, session. And then number eight, parental rights and educational freedom. And as you know, this is critical because our public schools are an absolute disaster right now. They're a mess. So. All right, so what can you do if you go to our TexasGOP.org website? We have got a menu item, hashtag text ledge. There will be all kinds of resources to help you in engaging with your representatives if you've never called, if you've never sent them an email. I give you a little template on there, tell you what, um, how to write it out. Um, if you don't know how to get in touch with their office, we've got all of that information for you. We've got talking points. Um, we've got the, if, if you're interested in, in a particular priority and want to know what the uh, Republican Party of Texas is doing, you can call the, the subcommittee chair for that priority, there, or you can email them, their information will be on that website. So um, I will be starting the legislative priorities reports again. How many of you got my reports last session? A few of you? Okay. I do a, a report once a week during session, and you can sign up for my report um, at tech, hashtag TechSledge. Next slide. Alrighty. So Stephen already gave you a little um, preview of what we're doing right now. We have got two campaigns for banning Democrat chairs. The first one, yes. um, Grassroots October Postcard Campaign. We're asking clubs, individuals, just to send a little handwritten card to Speaker Phelan asking him to please make a rule change in the House for no Democrat chairs. Um, and then November, we're calling this November two phone call campaign after the election. We don't want to bug them too much until after the election. We got to get them all voted back in. But after the election, call Speaker Phelan's office and your representative and ask them to vote for the rule change for no dim chairs. So those, those are our, our two campaigns. Um, your action items for the LPs. Number one, Stephen said this so well. Obviously, we have no legislative session if we have a Francis O'Rourke in the governor's mansion, right? So we have got to get Governor Abbott back um, yes. as governor. Yes. Vote Republican all the way down your ballot, especially those down ballot races. Um, State Board of Education, Evelyn Brooks, we got to get her in. She's fantastic. Um, so make sure you go all the way down the ballot. Share the legislative priorities information with, uh, within your circles of influence, with your neighborhood, your uh, friends, school, um, whatever, whatever kinds of circles you've got. Now is the time to be meeting with your representative. So you can call your representative, you can make an appointment, uh, let, ask him or her what bills they will file and support for our legislative priorities. Tell them what's important to you and as their constituent, 
you are the key and you are important to them. Work with your grassroots leaders in your districts as they coordinate campaigns. And we will be having more campaigns and we'll be letting um, Stephen know so we can pass that information on to you. And my very last slide, I just want to remind us as we work with Stuart Well, what our founders gave us, a republic of liberty founded on a righteous foundation. May we remember to keep our eyes on the Lord because that is where our strength comes. And no matter what the world throws at us, he is sovereign. And all he asks is that we stand for what is right. So thank you all so much. I said just a couple of minutes for any questions anybody might have for Jill. You did a good I covered job. it all. There you go. Very good. Now I'd like to ask our uh, main speaker to come up. Uh, we all know him as Ted's dad, Rafael Cruz. Come on down. 